yesterday we had an incredible range of sessions around the challenges we're facing, threats to democracy, how civic tech can play a role in addressing them. Now, day two, we're back with an agenda that uh, really features two elements of the present moment and also of our future, uh, climate change and artificial intelligence. When my society developed our own program of work around climate as a civic tech organization, we had a lot of conversations about whether this means a pivot away from our existing areas of work. Uh, and to me, the answer was clear. There's a, a phrase coined by Paddy Lofman that I quote quite a bit, which says that climate is no longer the story, but the setting in which all stories take place. It's here. Uh, and that includes the story of civic tech and the ways in which it can be applied to improve public participation and transparency and accountability. Uh, the climate crisis means that we have to rapidly make changes across all our societies, and that's a rewiring of how we source and use energy at every scale. Puts into sharp focus the questions we already have about democracy, and more broadly about governance, how that can work at scale and speed and with the complexity that we need it to. Uh, it's not just a question of electrical power, it's a question of political power and decision making. Simon Sharp at the World Resources Institute has argued really eloquently that in response to this problem that uh, requires complex systems change at multiple levels, the most important question we need to ask ourselves is, what's our biggest point of leverage? So as individuals, organizations, and countries, what can we as civic tech organizations, uh, what are we best positioned to contribute? So today's agenda sh shows digital tools playing a wide variety of roles. We've got... Uh, talks on coordinating flood response, shedding light on carbon markets, using maps and volunteers to respond to climate risks in urban areas, tracking and analyzing climate finance, and making climate policy and sustainability transitions more broadly accessible and understandable. Meanwhile, a new generation of AI-powered tools suggests we're not at a plateau, but at the threshold of another era of change in terms of the transformations that digital tools have made to the way we live. Looking forward, we're gonna have new capabilities as well as challenges and how we decide to use those capabilities will be key. As the climate crisis intensifies the need for transparency, accountability and the empowerment of communities to take action and make their voices heard, the new capabilities of AI raise the stakes of digital services and the way they impact our lives. If they've got potential to provide value to citizens and societies, they're also raising new questions about ethical use. And as AI tools in particular get capability around language, we've got questions about what their impact on society and in particular on the civic space are going to be and how they might shape democratic engagement in the longer term. There are real risks here of entrenching existing inequalities and concentrating power where it already lies. In the words of Rachel Caldicott, the technology strategist, we need AI that works for 8 billion people, not 8 billionaires. In that context, I think it's also to, important to acknowledge that energy use and AI are entangled with each other at a material level, with AI ha having the potential to act as an enabler of climate response in different ways, but also at being a significant and growing consumer of energy. I'm really happy today that we have sessions outlining how AI is already being used in our civic systems. For example, analyzing the responses to FOI requests, resident consultations, but we also have critical evaluations of the costs and benefits of these new capabilities. So looking at people, how people think and feel about AI, which use cases really improve governance and how it might affect critical parts of our democratic processes like lobbying. The moment we're in now does feel fairly fraught. And it, when I was making my notes for this introduction, it reminded me of seeing a documentary about 20 years ago called Touching the Void. Uh, which is about a climber who uh, is climbing in the Peruvian Andes and he falls in a crevasse and breaks his leg and he basically gets left for dead. And the film describes his incredible kind of personal fortitude in making it back to base camp. And towards the end of the film, uh, the filmmaker asks him how he kept going over these two days. And he says, you have to make decisions. You have to keep making decisions. If you make wrong decisions, that's okay. But if you don't make any decisions, you're stuffed. And I think both the climate crisis and rapid progress in AI are calling on us to make complex decisions with long-term consequences in mind that are gonna require active, informed and effective participation. Uh, 
and actually deviate from the path of least resistance and concentrated interests. Uh, but that means enabling participation from all kinds of people. But those uh, crises are also impacting us in the present with sudden disorienting changes to our circumstances that interrupt that sort of long-term thinking. And I think there's a real risk that all kinds of people disengage and that we surrender to more dangerous paths, not with a bang, but with a collective shrug which is all fairly big talk for a small technology conference and uh, an under-resourced sector. But I say it just to make the point that given our skills and interests, we don't lack for urgent and important problems to contribute to. We know that technology can be used to support making decisions that handle scale and complexity and taking on big acts of problem solving. But we also need uh, to take decisions with moral imagination an interest and a sensitivity to the complexities of the many people and lives that are going to be affected. And I think that's where the civic part really matters. I don't think the tools of tomorrow are going to look like the tools of today, but I do believe that we need an investment in tech built and operated by organizations with civic values built into their governance models, into their development processes, into their funding and accountability structures, and into their evaluation and success criteria. We also need a spirit of experimentation and learning, both in how we make decisions and in the tools we build to support it. And so I'm really happy today that we're gonna hear about lots of different experiments in combining technology and people power in new ways. Uh, for example, in structured crowdsourcing approaches and multi-stakeholder governance experiments. A really effective civic tech sector also needs to be, uh, needs to recognize wider systems of change which we can contribute to. And so I'm also thrilled that we're going to be hearing sessions on partnerships and collaborations between technologists and researchers, public interest journalists, civil society organizations, and national and local government. I think bringing different disciplines together is always a really useful thing to do, and particularly when it's really clear that we need to stretch the boundaries of how we think about problems to really address the challenges that we face. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm really delighted to welcome Nick Maybe as our keynote speaker for this morning. Uh, Nick's a founder and co-CEO of E3G, an independent climate change think tank with a global focus on political economy and governance and a goal to translate climate politics, economics and policies into action. He's previously worked at the UK government, WWF, the London Business School and the UK electricity industry. And as an academic, he was lead author of Argument in the Greenhouse, examining the economics of climate change. He also founded London Climate Action Week, one of the world's largest climate festivals, which is less than two weeks away. So we're particularly grateful that he has made time to speak here today. Uh, when we met for the first time last year, I came away incredibly energized because it felt like one of those meetings where you're thinking about the same challenges, but with completely different toolkits. And I think that's always energizing. Nick's gonna be making the case for putting democracy back into climate action. Please welcome Nick Maybe to the stage. <laughs> 